We are heading to the most southern point of the U.S., Key West, Florida. This city is beautiful with a mix of Caribbean and American influences. We've been doing Caribbean sailings for many years now and have never stopped at Key West before. So we were so excited to see that we had it on this itinerary. This is Linda and Aaron with Traveling Flamingo, and come join us as we tell you everything you need to know to prepare for your day in Key West. Usually for port tours, we focus on what is at the port. Well, there isn't much of a port as you're put right in the city. So we're gonna go over the port, what to expect, but also what's around the port and some popular attractions. When you arrive, there are three possible cruise ship docks that you could be stopping at. The most popular one is Pier B, which is where we docked and is part of the Westin Resort's private marina. It's not a long dock, so you're just a couple minutes away from ice cream stores in the downtown. You could also dock at Mallory Square right in the old town and is a popular spot for catching the sunset. There are lots of shops and amenities nearby, which we'll get to. The last option if there are a lot of ships in Key West is visiting the Navy's Outer Mole Pier. This is actually where we went to tour the Coast Guard ship. There's a park, a beach. The dock here is only about a five minute shuttle ride from the downtown. We were actually thinking of doing a ship tour of the old Coast Guard ship we went on. So if that's something you'd be interested in, let us know in the comments below. Something that's so great about Key West is that you are right in the downtown. I can't say that enough with all of the restaurants, museum and transportation. It's a great city that you can explore on your own or do an excursion. We've done the hop on hop off in other cities and have found them to be great, but here we decided we were going to tour on our own as we really wanted to explore the Coast Guard ship. Clearly the Old Town Trolley Tours and the Conk Tours were very popular. If you're exploring on your own, you might want to take the Duval Loop, which is a free bus and it makes 18 stops in that tourist area. It's important to note also that the bus is air conditioned. We were super thankful for that in the summer. You want to do a bit of research to know which stop you want to get off at for different attractions, but it saved us from paying for a car rental or trying to figure out parking. The website was really helpful and you can track the bus in real time. We also saw a lot of people renting bikes, scooters, or a golf cart type car to explore on their own. We were there during the heat wave and this would have been a good idea. I really like the heat, but even I was finding it too much. If you're looking to enjoy some food and drink, there are so many restaurants to stop at. That's the benefit of being right in the downtown. Although I think one of the most popular spots was the ice cream store right at the port. Did I say it was a heat wave? Another popular spot to get some food is Louis's Backyard. If you're looking for something more unique, check out B.O.'s Fish Wagon. There's no shortage of options, so if you're looking for something other than cruise food, you can find that in the downtown. But if you're interested in doing excursions and sightseeing, there's plenty of that too. It's really cool to dock right in the city and not need to tender. If you're interested in doing an excursion, there are tons of water-based tours like sailing on a catamaran, jet skiing, paddle boarding, deep sea fishing, and kayaking. If you want something more land-based, there are bike tours, you can visit an aquarium, pub crawls, and the hop-on, hop-off Old Town Trolley. As you walk towards the city, you will come to Mallory Square that has some local vendors. There's also washrooms inside and it's right near the aquarium and the shipwreck museum. A lot of people like to visit the Hemingway Home and Museum. This is something I would like to do on our next visit. I love going through old homes. The last one we did was actually the Ringling Home in Sarasota. Right in the downtown, you can also visit the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum. A popular spot for families is the Key West Tropical Forest and Botanical Garden. Kids are free and adults are only $10. It is about a 15 to 20 minute drive from Mallory Square. Key West is also known for being the most southern point in the continental U.S. where you can find this concrete buoy and there's a ton of souvenirs and other stuff with the mile marker zero on it. If you're interested in some time at the beach, there are a few smaller beaches like South Beach and Loggerhead Beaches Bar. Only about a mile from the port is the Fort Zachary Taylor Beach, which is where you can find a larger beach, but there is an entrance fee. The largest public beach you could check out is Smathers Beach. If you're more interested in some souvenir shopping, there's no shortage of stores downtown. As we said, all the mile marker zero magnets and t-shirts, there's arts. There's a ton of local artists and vendors as well. 
When deciding what to bring, you always need to have your cruise card or bracelet, some way that the ship can identify that you're getting off and on the ship. Depending on the cruise line and where you are cruising from, you'll want to have your photo ID or passport. Having some local currency is always good practice, so you'll want to make sure you've got some American money with you, but most places do take credit cards. In our backpack, we always have sunscreen, hats, as I can burn easily, and traveling in the summer, it's the sun can be very strong. I love the heat, but I also don't want to burn and ruin the rest of my trip. If you're planning on going to the beaches, you'll want to bring your towel and swimsuit. Otherwise, you can save the space for souvenirs. Another thing we always put in our backpacks is our power pack. Usually taking pictures and video and connecting with family, I go through my battery really fast. Aaron also got me this nice wireless one, so I don't need to worry about having the right cable. Aaron will post some links in the description if you're interested in some of the things that we use. This is definitely a port worth getting off and exploring. You can do an excursion or you can easily tour around on your own. I think this also is a port you can return to again and again and each time do something different. Last time we did the old Coast Guard ship tour and next time I really want to go to the Hemingway home. We just also want to pop in here and thank everybody for their support as we did our Feed Ontario fundraiser for the months of November and December. And we want to say thank you so much. We actually beat last year. We had $200. This year we were able to donate $250 from all the revenue from merchandise as well as some of our own contributions. So thank you very much everybody for your support in that. Have you ever been to Key West before? What's your favorite thing to do there? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you're interested in more of our content, we have another channel, Flamingos in Wonderland, where we talk about all things Disney and theme parks. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. We hope that you found it helpful. Remember, memories are forever, so make them fabulous. Thanks again for watching, and happy travels.